In this video, I want to take a look at the red blood cells, the RBCs or the erythrocytes. This will be our last free video on the blood that we're going to release on YouTube. Be sure to check out MrFordsClass.net for the rest of the series, as well as the other series in the anatomy of physiology, as well as science and technology. Remember, your membership is what allows us to keep doing what we're doing. So be sure to check that out. Okay, so back to our red blood cells. They are around 7.5 micrometers in diameter. The average amount of red blood cells, the red blood cell count, is around 5,200,000 plus or minus 300 per cubic millimeter for men. In women, it's around 4,700,000, give or take 300,000. The red blood cells are made of hemoglobin, and we'll talk about what hemoglobin is before we're done with this video. So just chill for now, all right? So it's made of hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is going to give red blood cells their color. When it's combined with oxygen, it has a very tricky name, oxyhemoglobin. Oxygen, hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin. Ta-da! When the oxygen has been released and there is no oxygen, it's been deoxygenated. It's deoxyhemoglobin. So oxyhemoglobin, deoxyhemoglobin also making up the red blood cell you find water electrolytes and enzymes red blood cells are kind of cool in our study of cell biology we took a look at nucleuses and red blood cells was one of the few cells in the body that lacked a nucleus well as the red blood cell is being developed while it's still in its infancy before it's been released for prime time it has a nucleus as the red blood cell starts to mature and gets ready to go out through the world, it will get rid of this nucleus. The getting rid of the nucleus allows the hemoglobin to pick up and take up shop there, which then will allow the binding of oxygen as well as the other gases into and out of the blood cell. The shape of the RBC is pretty amazing. Red blood cells are what we call biconcave. Their shape is biconcaved. And the way I explained this before in a live lecture was I took a jelly donut and I pushed in on the middle part. The middle portion of the red blood cell is thin, closer together, while the edges are wider. This shape allows two very special things to occur. One, it allows that red blood cell to squeeze through the capillaries. And two, it allows the hemoglobin to get very close to the cell surface, which helps with the gas exchange. So how are red blood cells made? We've already talked about the origin of all types of blood cells. When we're looking at red blood cells, the synthesis is going to start with the red blood cell still in the pro-urethroblast stage. It will then continue to the reticulocyte stage. The heme molecule, remember we said hemoglobin, well the heme molecule will combine with a long polypeptide chain, the globin. It's the combination of these two which allow the oxygen to bind. The heme and globin form the hemoglobin. Iron is a vital component to the creation of hemoglobin. So now let's talk about when red blood cells die. Red blood cells last for around 120 days. That's a great test question, by the way. Red blood cells last for around 120 days. They can travel around the body 75,000 times. That's kind of amazing if you think about it. You've got these little itty bitty red blood cells and a huge body in comparison, and they're making round trips 75,000 times. No wonder why they die after 120 days. When it's time to retire, the red blood cells are going to get the pink slip. They're going to get retired by the spleen and liver. In other words, that's where they're going to die. The red blood cells are then destroyed by the macrophages. The hemoglobin will then be broken down into its component compart, oh, the component things. It, it's broken down into what it was made of to begin with. Okay, that's it for red blood cells. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the very important immuno thingamabobs known as the white blood cells. We'll see you for that. Bye-bye.